Hi everyone, I'm Lori McGraw with the Resource Rundown. So as we move into our new school year, many teachers are wondering what they can do to increase attendance and engagement in an online environment. And it's a struggle, we're all trying to figure that out. So today I have a colleague here with me, Stacy, who's, um, we're doing our social distancing thing here, who um, we've discussed some ideas and come up with some things that we are going to share with you that we're gonna do in our classrooms to help with engagement and attendance. Also, many of you may have some great ideas, so please share something that you've done in your classroom or in your online classroom that worked that promoted engagement and attendance. And you can share those in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe down below, and we're gonna get started right now. So the first thing we're going to start with is staying connected. And one way to do that is with guardian summaries. So a teacher can go in and send out email invites for guardian summaries and a parent can go in and accept that invite and specify if they want to receive notifications daily, weekly, monthly, and they'll receive an update based on their preferences, letting them know what their student has been assigned and what um, they might have missing. And this is all done through Google Classroom. And another way of keeping that connection going is by discussing um, utilizing the email. So students can also receive email information that their parents are getting as well, but that helps them be accountable to the assignments that have come out to them and know where they stand, whether they're missing or what's up and coming. So something else that you can do is check in with your students. Do check-ins, whether you're calling on the phone or sending out emails. It's a great way to stay connected with your students. Right, and utilizing a digital bulletin board is a great way to do that. You can um, pose questions to them and then they answer it. And a resource is using Padlet. Padlet's a great online platform that you can put those questions out there, students can answer them, and then it starts off the, the session. So another thing you can do is to have some type of question answer forum for parents so that they are engaged and involved and they know what's going on and you can teach them and show them how to use some of the programs that um, are gonna be used with your, your students in the class. So what happens if students aren't attending? Sometimes students aren't able to log in and aren't attending your online classroom. It's super important to reach out to them and find out what's preventing them from logging on or being in attendance. So reaching out to maybe not just them, but the parents or other individuals in the family that might be able to help out. Another thing that you can do is build relationships with your students. How do you do that online? So we've kind of talked about some things that you could do that would promote that. One thing is to put out an interest survey. Allow students to fill out information that is engaging to them. And then as the teacher, I would create my lessons that specifically targets those interest areas of my students. Another way to help students be engaged during online learning is to have a type of reader board point system where students can earn points for different activities and different lessons. Um, in a variety of ways, but having a reader board so that they can keep track of what's going on in the point system. You can also showcase student work. So when a student is doing a really good job with something, you could ask permission to show that to the whole class and showcase their work so that they, other students can see what's going on, what they did, how they did it, and that student that you've showcased feels good about what they did. What happens though when you have a student that's not engaging in the lesson? So something that we had talked about was keeping track of those students that aren't um, raising their hand or aren't discussing things even in your online platform and then finding ways to communicate with them and connect with them outside of that. If you're in a secondary environment, middle school or high school, you also could coordinate home phone calls for like the first eight weeks with your teammates so that you break up the class and each of you take a section of those kids so maybe you're only responsible for 25 of them and call them and make sure that everything's going okay and see if they need help with anything. So let's get into engagement. And you can also check out my Making Better Lessons video. It kind of goes over um, how to improve engagement in your class. 
So you could start off your lesson with a poll or a question and then based off the interest surveys and then um, have a discussion about that and then tie it into your lesson. Right, and another way to start a lesson is to show a video clip, then everybody discusses it and moves into the rest of your lesson. I know many students do, and I've talked with my high school student, I know he doesn't want a teacher that's just going to lecture the whole time during a lesson. It's <laughs> not gonna go well, <laughs> we all know that. Um, so it's important to make sure that you're teaching with your students, not teaching at them. So we, sat here and discussed some ideas that we want to share with you guys. So as far as elementary is concerned, there are some things that you can do that will help keep students engaged, be focused on the content, but um, kind of mix it up a little bit. So one of those things would be a show and tell. So I might just tell my students the first 20 seconds that you have the microphone, you're unmuted, that you get to show and tell, and then we'll move through the class and then go on to the rest of our lesson. Another activity might be I spy. So everyone would get an opportunity to be the one that spies something. And then we would use a question technique and categories and things like that to decipher what it is that that student I spied. It also allows them to take ownership of that lesson and, and be a part of it more than just your regular type lessons. Another one is a scavenger hunt and all the students absolutely love this. And so we would choose something that everybody had to go and get. We would obviously set some ground rules so that you know we weren't hurting anybody or getting there first or whatever in the house. Then they have to bring that item back to the screen. Read alouds, right? Everybody <laughs> loves a good read aloud. Okay, maybe not everybody, but most elementary kids absolutely love read alouds. Choosing a good book that's not too long, that has lots of pictures, and you can utilize just your screen for the book. So then they're hearing your voice, they are actively a part of that read aloud as if you were in class. So some examples that would work for any grade, whether it's elementary or high school, would be Padlet, that bulletin board. There's also mystery bag. Right, so a mystery bag can be any kind of item in a bag. And then use a questioning type categories to decipher what that is. Kind of like an I spy, but the item is in the bag, so it has to fit in there. And then you could use that to maybe do a writing prompt or some other type of activity with that. You could also um, do solve a problem. So you, they would give them a problem and then they would solve that problem and then they could flash up their paper in front of them to show their work at a numbered time. And the last one would be, would you rather? So in an English situation, if I'm thinking about that, but it could be in any situation, you could use it of, would you rather write an essay or would you rather do a presentation? And another way to utilize would you rather is really getting to know your students. So, so another great idea, and we kind of got this from another teacher out there, but theme dress days. And you could create a list and go through it with your students, what type of theme dress days they'd like to have. And then you could also do random contests about who had the best costume or who was the most creative. So obviously if you're in a school such as ours that has a dress requirement on any kind of hybrid, it might not work as well, but if you're all online or for schools out there that don't have those dress requirements, you can utilize this, this idea. Okay, and some of the last piece that we wanna talk about is making sure that your students take little mini breaks. So at the secondary <laughs> level, um, that's gonna look different than it will look for Stacy at the elementary level. But at the secondary level, maybe halfway through your lesson, just have your kids get up, take a little two minute break. Maybe they go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, whatever it is, but you give them a couple minutes to go do that. It's not, it's actually a bonus that they're at home and they could do something like that because you wouldn't really be able to let them all go to the bathroom and get a drink of water at the same time when you're in class. So that is a one positive with online learning. <laughs> right. Something that I've utilized in my classroom and I am utilizing online learning as well is a platform called Go Noodle. So there's their plug, but it is a management system that already has these pre two to three minute activities movement wise, and it's a guided movement. And the music's already there. It's all very appropriate. Don't have to worry about any of that censoring stuff. But because they're small, I can share my screen 
screen and have all kids participate in that. Another thing is to include um, like a five minute fitness and we could do some stretching and those kinds of things. So when we are teaching in chunks, then I can put those in there, utilize Go Noodle or a five minute fitness at any time. And that's something we wanted to mention and we kind of forgot this as we were going through, but you want to make sure that you're teaching in chunks. You don't want to teach for, and you need to change every 20 minutes what it is you're doing, whether you're in class or whether you're online. Right. And one last thing just to remember is that our kids are going to be in front of screens a long time. So the amount of time that we allow them to have those breaks, the more they're actually going to be engaged with us during our lessons. Don't forget that if you have a really great idea of something that you use in your classroom that promotes engagement and attendance that would also work online, or if you did something that worked really well in your online class already that promoted attendance engagement, please leave those in the comments down below. We want to hear from you. So I just want to say thank you to Stacy for joining me today and helping me out with this. This was really helpful because I have no clue about the elementary side of things and she's invaluable in that area. Well, thanks Lori for all the work you've been putting in in order to help us with our resource rundown and learning all these new ways of improving our classes during this online learning. Well, thank you and you're welcome. <laughs> so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or give us a thumbs up and <laughs> don't forget to hit the subscribe button, that notification bell, so you don't miss out on anything I have coming up. And as always, Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.